get this out of here, this card crap. Because today, while we are cardboard connection video, we're talking starting lineup toys, the greatest sports collectible of all time. No, oh, I guess we're also talking some Cuban baseball prospect cards and some other great cards of all time. But my favorite segment, starting lineups, coming up soon, just after this break. Let's kick off the show by continuing to hype up for the 2015 Major League Baseball season. We decided to take a look at some of our favorite Cuban-born players. Sorry, I wanted to say Cubs. In today's game, Cuban prospects are treated differently than prospects that come from the draft in that they are often rushed right to the major leagues to display their amazing talents. You can bet that when the most recent Cuban prospect signs with the team, the first question asked by fans is, when will he start? Rather than, how long will it take him to get up here to the majors? We found five Cuban-born Major League Baseball players that are making a significant impact for their teams and for cardboard. We begin with Jose Abreu. Signed in the 2013 winter offseason, Abreu made his debut on opening day of 2014 and proceeded to slug his way to American League Rookie of the Year honors. At age 28, Abreu is the prototypical power-hitting first baseman. He finished his first season with a 317 average, 36 home runs, and 107 RBI. Abreu also took the collecting world by storm, especially with his 2014 Bowman Chrome Prospect Autos that still fetch a mighty price. On the cheap, we like this insert from 2014 Top Stadium Club. Those die-cut luminous inserts have an artistic honeycomb design and a great picture of Abreu in his White Sox gear. If you want to spend, why not go for the, this Bat Barrel nameplate from 2014 Panini National Treasures. Featuring an appropriately sized and styled bat chip, this is an Abreu relic worth owning. Moving on, we have the Major League record holder for fastest fastball. Araldis Chapman proudly holds that record at 105 miles per hour. The power lefty was once thought to be a candidate for the starting rotation, but he found confidence in the bullpen and has become one of the most dominant closers in the league. Chapman's presence on cardboard started strong when he was believed to be a starting pitching prospect. Since achieving success as a closer, Chapman's values have dipped somewhat, making him a great value for collectors. We love this 2011 Allen & Ginter Mini Auto with a colorful frame and crisp signature, and this card can be found for about 20 bucks. If you want something more recent, 2014 Panini National Treasures has this notable nicknames autograph. Chapman, lacking any sort of nickname on the national level, chose to wisely sign just his name instead of making up a silly nickname for himself. Right, Money Manziel? Well, if you're looking for one of the best batting practice players from Cuba, look no further than Jonas Cespedes. Winner of the 2013 and 14 Home Run Derby, Cespedes has shown the league he has the power to play in the majors. Surprisingly, Cespedes is the only player on this list to play for multiple teams. Signed by the Athletics in 2012, Jonas was traded during the 2014 season to the Boston Red Sox. He only played half a season in Boston before being traded once again this winter to the Detroit Tigers. His best cards came during his tenure with the Athletics, including this Ivan Lovegren favorite, 2014 Topps Triple Threads die cut 63% autograph relic. Yeah, well, could have said something we could understand. But we look, uh, went looking for cards featuring uh, Jonas in a Red Sox uniform, and we found this 2014 Topps 5-star. Definitely a, a must-own for those Sox fans that bled Jonas for two months. And then on top of the pitcher's list, Jose Fernandez. Yes, he's young and was hurt most of last year, but we love his potential. He took the league by storm in 2013 with a meteoric rise from the low minors to the big leagues and was easily one of the top starting pitchers before going into the 2014 season. Like most young pitchers, Fernandez experienced elbow trouble and became a candidate for Tommy John surgery. Fernandez is expected back sometime this season, and when he returns, he will hopefully regain his spot among the elite National League starters. One of Fernandez's most coveted cards is his 2013 Topps Chrome Rookie Autographs, a true rookie card for Hernandez. He seems to have done a much better job signing the refractor and colored parallels than he did with his base autos, so look for those and expect the price to jump as the colors get rarer. We also love this whole letter patch from 2014 Topps 5 Star. The Z is no sleeper for us. We just want to find the other eight letters. And we finish out with Yasiel Puig, star outfielder for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Puig has been affectionately nicknamed the Wild Horse by Hall of Fame announcer Vin Scully, and it is an apt comparison for the way Puig plays the game with a reckless abandon. 
Whether he's throwing a ball from the warning track to the infield, running from first to third on a shallow fly ball, or tagging up on an infield single, Puig is exciting to watch. He's also exciting to collect. Puig took over the hobby for the summer of 2013 with his Bowman Prospect Autos. They aren't reaching the highs they did when Puig first appeared in the majors, but still be prepared to shell out for top parallels like this Dodger Blue Refractor. In an ode to Vin Scully, we also like this Wild Horse Die Cut Booklet from the 2014 National Treasures. Now that's how you do die cut letters. Thanks, Panini. Tell us what you think about Cuban baseball players and Cuban-American politics, pressed pork sandwiches with pickles, and your favorite cards that we might have missed. Don't forget to like and share this video after you've left a comment. We want to hear from you, and we want to see that you're hearing us. we got to work on our transitions just a little bit. Well, after that bit, let's go ahead and see what the best of the bay is for this past month, week. I think I'm fired. Well, while that was an exciting best of the bay and we always enjoy talking sports cards, we're going to take a quick segue into the world of sports collectibles. That's right. As you see behind me on the shelf, our favorite sports collectibles of all time, starting lineup toys. Now, the history behind starting lineups is interesting. They actually came uh, about 1988. That was the first year we saw them. And they did fold in 2001, partially because of the economic impact of the 1998 basketball strike. I don't have any basketball toys, sadly. I would like to add some to my collection, but we do have some on our list of top 10 starting lineup toys of all time. We begin with the founder of starting lineup, Pat McKinley, former Cincinnati Bengals punter who shared the idea for a sports collectible toy with an executive at Kenner, and voila, starting lineups were born. McKinley actually got his own in the later years in 1997, distributed only at conventions, making it a slightly rarer for the late year starting lineups. Going back to the first year, 1988, Brian Bosworth, one of my favorites. That's one I definitely want to add to this collection. Now, there were also some variations that popped up over the years, including this 1998 edition of uh, Sammy Sosa, where you see the extended edition, but then they had a Wrigley Field edition, which is actually much rarer and does go for about $100. Up next, at number seven on the list, we have... Ah, uh, number 44... The only number that's been retired in baseball history. Oh, wait, no. That's Jackie Robinson. That's supposed to be number 42. 1994 Cooperstown Collection starting lineup featured this error, which marks another one of the variations that you can find if you look hard enough and are actually worth some money. We would love to add this one, another 1988, Tony Dorsett. Now, starting lineups are unique from those early eras in that they were regionally distributed, so stars are a bit easier to find sometimes than rarer guys, but Tony Dorsett is the rare Hall of Fame exception. Coming in next, we have Michael Jordan's 1988 starting lineup. Surprisingly, uh, not as valuable as some of the others from that same set, again, because of scarcity. 1994, we see another error where Dennis Rodman, sadly in a Spurs jersey, while his base had blonde hair, they came out with a red hair variation that's much harder to find and a little bit more valuable. Would love it if they had a red jersey variation showing him as a Chicago Bull. 1992 starting lineup featured another star named MJ from the basketball world, only this time Magic Johnson, wearing, instead of his purple Lakers uniform, a Lakers gold jersey variation, which is hard to come by. Now, as we mentioned, the stars were mass-produced, which means that the uh, linebackers, offensive linemen, were actually some of the harder ones to come by. So we've seen insane prices on EJ Jr., our favorite X-Wing pilot, Garen Varis, and our number two, Bill Fralick from the Atlanta Falcons. Apparently, Atlanta was one of the lesser-produced regions, which means that this one recently sold for $800 from 1989, no less, not even the inaugural year of 1988. That said, 1988, the gem is Utah Jazz basketball starting lineups. That's right. Out of all of them, apparently people in Utah don't play with toys. These were so smallly produced that the John Stockton, actually even the Thurl Bailey is worth more than Michael Jordan's original starting lineup. But the gem of them all, Aside from Stockton, Eaton, Bailey, Carl Malone. That's right. The NBA's leading scorer 
is also the starting lineup's number one valued card. Well, they call it a card on the back. I just can't not say card. That said, what are your favorite collectibles? What would you like to see on my shelf? What should I go out and get? I just brought, bought a Brian McRae from 1995 for 99 cents on eBay. So, we have a lot of fun with these starting lineups. Do you have any in your collection? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching Cardboard Connection video. New releases or is that the final one? Yeah, new releases. In case you're interested in that heritage, check out our product preview that we did last week. Now, we like to show groups of cards here on Cardboard Connection, rank them from number 10 to number 1, but we usually do it with a specific theme. Dan Marino cards, Mickey Mantle cards, Michael Jordan autographed Wizards cards. Ugh. That said, we thought maybe we'd take just a minute and look at the 10 greatest cards of all time. Hands down, no debate, you can't argue with us. Now, I will give you this one caveat. When we were looking at this list, we did factor in popularity. So while the 1866 Unions of Lansingburg team set might be more valuable than, say, you know, Darnay Scott's rookie card, we went with popularity, so Darnay Scott is on the list. Let's look at the list, starting now with number 10, 20. 0304 Upper Deck Ultimate Collection Limited LeBron James Ultimate Rookie Patch Autograph. Now this particular one happens to be numbered 23 out of 25, making it the top of the top, but any of those 25 are going to be a fantastic card. Now we go back into classic hockey. If this card was a little newer, it might be a little bit more relevant. Bobby Orr's Rookie Card. For football, we go with Tom, uh, sorry, Peyton Manning. You see the mistake. It's going to come up next. Uh, Peyton Manning's Playoff Ticket Contenders, which is unnumbered, followed by Tom Brady's Playoff Contenders rookie card. By this time, they were numbering them. This one in particular is number 12 out of 100, making it his jersey number and incredibly rare. Slightly more popular than Bobby Orr, iconic card, Wayne Gretzky's rookie card from 1979, Topps Opeechee. Hard to believe that this is this low on the list, but Michael Jordan's Fleer rookie card from 1985 must have in any collection. And now baseball. We call them baseball cards for a reason. Joe DiMaggio's most famous one would probably be this 1938 Gaudi with a big head and lots of little information on the card front, followed by the Home Run King. Debatable, but still. Hank Aaron's rookie card coming in at number three. Number two, we do go back, way back into vintage for the iconic T206 Sweet Capital Honus Wagner. There are other variation backs. You can get the drum. You can get some others. Any T206 Honus Wagner is an amazing card. And though it is debatable whether this is number one or number two, depending on how you feel about Honus, 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle rookie card. Still iconic. Still the number one most searched for card on eBay. We had to give this the number one spot over Wagner, factoring in that popularity, even though it can be had for a fraction of the price. And by fraction, I mean 50% perhaps. So those are our 10 greatest cards of all time. Wait, where, where's Darnay Scott? Why isn't he on the list? I told you, his 1994 Collector's Choice Upper Deck Rookie card. That's, well, you see why they give me the boot from time to time. But what do you think of our top 10? Which cards would you like to see on the list? Did we mess up going with Manning and Brady over Marino and Montana or Johnny Unitas? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Cardboard Connection video.